We'll now put together everything that you've learned in this lesson to solve an important problem. How to validate the input that a human user provided. Think again about the program with which we started this lesson, the elevator simulator. The user enters a number between 1 and 18, but not 13. There is no button labeled 13. And then that program computed the actual floor. Never mind that part. What I want to talk about is the part where we read the user input. In our program, we don't have buttons, but we ask the user to type in the input. There's a prompt. And then what if some crazy user now enters 19 in the hope of getting to the roof or something? Or minus 2? Or some text. Users do all sorts of interesting things. And when they do, the program might misbehave. So it's a better idea to catch those first and just tell the user that that was not right. Let's list the things that can go wrong and how one can address them in Java. First off, there is no button 13. And so in Java, you might write, if the floor equals 13, then print an error for the user. Let's continue. The next rule is that the bottom floor is 1 and the top floor is 18. So if the user enters a number that is less than 1 or greater than 18, we want to reject that. Here is the Java code. Note the use of the OR operator here. If the floor is less than 1 or greater than 18, then we print this error message. And finally, there is the issue, what if the user doesn't even type any number but some words? That would actually be bad because then the next int method would fail. Let me show you how to protect against that. There is another method that we haven't yet seen called hasNextInt, which looks at the user input and instead of doing what the next int method does, namely returning it, it just checks whether it is an integer or not. It returns true if the user entered an integer. It returns false if the user entered something else. In other words, it's a method that returns a Boolean value, so we can test for that in the if statement. If the method returns true, then it is safe to call next int. We can read the input and then process it in any way we want. If, on the other hand, this method returns false, then we print an error message. Now it's your turn. Put those three pieces together and fix up the elevator demo so that any bad input from the user is caught and the program only proceeds when the user did the right thing, an integer between 1 and 18, but not 13.